everybody to um, our Learning Abroad preview. Sorry, I want to say fair, which is not a fair this year. So our preview week to share about our Exploring in Korea program. I am Pamela Lyon. I am the program coordinator for our Learning Abroad programs in the Division of Public Health. Today we have Dr. T.P. Singh. He is the program director for the Exploring Public Health in Korea, and I will turn that over to T.P. Thank you, Pam. Um, give me a minute to switch over to sharing screen so that I can walk through my slides. Uh, welcome, everyone. And while, uh, while he's doing that, I will just mention, I am going to put in the chat we are recording this, and so if you choose, if you don't want to have your picture up, um, hold on, I had it right there. Sorry. Um, turn off your camera. Um, but we are videotaping this so that this session can be put on the website for those who are unable to attend. Okay, TV. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Um important point for people to know that we are recording and uh, giving them an option to be off camera. So I am now going to be pulling my slides and um, just wanted to confirm whether you are seeing my um, slides with the first slide is the welcome um, on it and I'm pulling it full screen, it's waiting, it's thinking. Yeah, can you see this now? Yes, I can see it. Okay, thank you. So oh, welcome, uh, welcome everyone. And uh, we in the division are so happy if we can be instrumental in um, moving you with us overseas for a, a great experience. And uh, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, which has limited the options of uh, uh, learning abroad are being offered from the University of Utah. So uh, we have other programs in the Division of Public Health, just to let you know that we have uh, um, projects or programs running for more than a decade and uh, that kind of uh, helps you in understanding that we are not new in the game. And um, uh, we take it very seriously in your learning. And uh, we have programs going out to Ghana, Peru, uh, and the Himalayas in India as well. There are other sessions which will be there, but um, though those uh, programs are not going out this summer, but you can learn about those uh, when they go out next year. So I lead uh, the India Learning Abroad um, part of our global public health offerings. Uh, the first one which I started was in 2009, 2010 in India, in Punjab. And uh, our experience so far in India has been great. And we've been able to take out about 70 students out to India. Uh, so far, and each one of them has uh, gained a lot of experience working and alongside communities um, in the provided service. They came back with um, uh, learning experiences which helped them in their scholarly activities of even a master's thesis and a PhD dissertation. So that's kind of a background to uh, India and my experience in leading the uh, summer learning abroad there. Uh, this is a, a new program which we have developed this year. Uh, since we have the University of Utah's Asia campus in Songdo, South Korea, uh, we uh, applied for it and it got approved from uh, the OGE and the risk management office as well. And I'll be talking about this. We've titled it Exploring South Korea, Society Development and Health. There are three elements which are important here to understand uh, and if you are keen to go out. Uh, and uh, my experience in uh, Asia in South Korea has been that I was the inaugural faculty uh, in 2014 when our uh, Asia campus was set up. 
Um, there was open land and we were in uh, buildings which were rented out and uh, slowly the entire operations uh, uh, was housed in a new building which was built in 2015. And I was living on campus during that time. So I have an Asian background. I am from India and uh, there are strong cultural uh, affiliations between South Asia, where India is, and East Asia. Uh, that's where South Korea is. And uh, part of my own personal investigations and um, uh, explorations uh, during the time when I lived in East Asia would be reflected in what I would lead you towards uh, in understanding East Asia uh, as it happens in South Korea. Um, looking at the society, looking at the development of that nation, uh, it got just decimated and how it has rebuilt itself. And you will see the modern society as it's developed and the traditional society, how it is uh, intersecting with the modern. And I will be able to take you out to all those places where uh, you can um, ask yourself these questions and have discussions. Those all be our, our discussion points when we are there in, uh, in South Korea. And uh, remember, there are three elements here, society, development, and health. And I'll be briefly introducing these three to you um, and our focus in this learning abroad. The dates are June 26th to July 17th. Um, June 26th being the first day when you fly out and July 17th when you fly out from South Korea. So flying out June 26th from Salt Lake City and arriving there on 27th and we can start working on uh, June 28th. We have an itinerary which I will show you uh, soon in a couple of slides. And this is provided if you do not have to have quarantine uh, for 14 days. We have laid out that plan as well. And uh, if there is a quarantine which is to be followed 14 days prior to this, um, that you will be traveling out. So we will answer all your questions, Pam and I, uh, on that process. But here I'm displaying the dates, which is uh, if there is no quarantine. So you leave on June 26th, fly out from here. The best uh, link is out from Seattle, Salt Lake City to Seattle and Seattle to Incheon Airport. And Incheon Airport is the international airport, which is 45 minutes away from our destination, our Asia campus. So it's very convenient, but we've also laid out a plan that we will be receiving you uh, at the airport so that you don't have to navigate through all that. Once you come out, uh, it'll be a process where you're helped and uh, moved to the Asia campus, but it's a short distance, 45 minutes, not more than that. And it's a lovely uh, uh, airport and you will like it uh, uh, as it has developed into another terminal, a huge terminal with uh, all the high tech gadgets in it and uh, uh, landing it's, itself is an, a great experience in Incheon because you will see how uh, you know, Korea relies on technology in driving humans through uh, uh, an airport space as well. So there will be a lot of uh, automated things happening around you if you're landing there for the first time. And uh, that's a great experience itself. And to calm down your soothing nerves, they even have uh, uh, Korean traditional music being played live. Uh, you can sit there, relax. So we, we will kind of guide you through that, but I'm just uh, invoking in you the, the, the vision of uh, uh, such a wonderful landing and reception when you are there in South Korea. Um, and then let me move to the next slide. Um, so, oh, where is it gone? Okay, here. Okay, so here's the map of South Korea. And if you look at it, uh, there is Seoul, which is capital of, of South Korea. The total population is uh, of the country is about 51 million and half of the population lives in Seoul and its adjoining districts. So it's a, a, it's a largely congested city and that's where we will be going and exploring, as I said, the development which has occurred, the traditional and the modern, and you will see that diversity out there when you go out with me to Seoul. 
but our operations is uh, in Incheon, in Songdo, the city. I'll be introducing that city to you uh, in a couple of slides. And Incheon is where you land, and then you travel, as I said, 45 minutes over land to be in Songdo, which is an hour or so subway ride from Seoul. So um, the critical thing is why you should join us. That's something which I will be addressing here. Um, dates which I have mentioned, but uh, kind of highlighted in red is why you should join us. That's been uh, our, um, you know, preparation for the slides. Uh, so as I said, um, June 26th is your flying, but I mentioned it June 28th because that's your first day of starting your field work. Location is Songdo, the city where uh, Asia campus is. And uh, as I said, it's one of those uh, founding un uh, universities in Incheon Global Campus. Uh, in 2014, when we started our undergraduate programs and graduate program, our graduate program is master's in public health there. And uh, these are students who were with me uh, in exploring public health in Korea. And uh, they are posing here with me. Uh, um, I'm the photographer here. So we were on a hike, uh, uh, which is one of the, you know, high points of our exploring public health. We go out for a excursion and uh, also do uh, these hiking trips where we have a lot of interactions peer to peer. And also we have discussions around our topic area, which is society development health as, as we learn more and more as we travel through those, those areas. So, um, um, these students, they beat me up to the hike to the top uh, and it's an intense hike and we will walk you through that uh, the steps of preparation for that hike uh, and if you are not uh, uh, wanting to go then we will have alternate things available so that you can engage in those activities while the others are on the hike. Uh, I've done that hike seven times already and I think my legs get me up again and, but I will be much slower. The students can do it in one hour or so. Um, uh, the person on the right side, the boy here, he, he did it like uh, a mountain goat. And uh, he, he may have done it twice uh, uh, in the time that I did it once. So, uh, but it is interesting to have uh, people like you asking questions during that experiential learning. And on the top, we have, uh, uh, typically in South Korea, the hikes at the mountaintop would have the South Korean flag and that's where you go and touch and then take pictures. And then uh, from there, if it's a clear day, you will get a view of the Seoul city. So it gives you the perspective of a city, um, which I said is uh, populated, densely populated with 21 million people and gives you an idea of the development which we are focusing on. So all these are conversation starters. So you'll be uh, on a hike where you will have a lot of conversation going on. And um, uh, we in our program have built in uh, a program assistant. Uh, typically we would be looking for a Korean student uh, living in South Korea and uh, who will be able to work with you, uh, will be prefer uh, preferably a bilingual and help you in navigating in and through uh, some of those uh, experiences. So uh, a program assistant would be at hand with me, uh, me being the program director. So we've thought of this language barrier and uh, we will keep that in consideration so that you don't come across this language issues while ordering food or asking questions as you go along. So, um, so the primary focus is your experiential learning through immersion. So that's what you could learn here. You could sit here um, and then never get out of bed and keep on uh, learning about Asian societies and South Korea. But to be there is getting yourself immersed in it. You think, you feel, and you experience. Uh, that's our focus. So in the three weeks, you'll be thinking, feeling, and experiencing say the tradition and the modern society, if you are in that group. Uh, I typically would want, if there are more than say uh, six students in a program, say if you are 12 students, I, I typically would have a pre-departure orientation with you 
and learn from you which of those three areas would you like to focus on society development or health and then those will be your group thoughts but then you you can decide to write a reflection paper which is an additional exercise for uh, for your coursework here remember it's four credits and writing a reflection paper is always good and that paper may transform into a scholarly activity like an abstract for a conference or if you want to keep it uh, further on you could uh, publish a full paper on it uh, you can work with me on those issues uh, when you come back but as a starter point uh, uh, your reflection paper is important and we will hear from you uh, at the last uh, end uh, of the of the program we will have you present in front of the class about what did you learn and uh, a short presentation for everyone who is in that uh, group uh, out there so we will be looking at the traditional and the modern society as i mentioned health and the built environment you will be as we will see in the pictures you will be living in a beautiful city planned high tech with the uh, um, planned infrastructure uh, roads buildings and as well as parks and you will see uh physical activity being uh, uh um you know uh being uh, the main core uh development and the society's focus so physical fitness people will be walking in those parks there are safe streets you will see cameras etc ensuring safety and security while you are on the streets um then there is uh, uh the element of uh, uh connect well connected um public transit uh, system so you will experience that as well and um the key for those who are exploring it through the lens of uh, health um the role of traditional medicine is a topic which has emerged of great interest as we have learned from covid 19 that some of the asian countries like um, south korea japan china and india have benefited from uh, their reliance on traditional medicine as a complement to the modern uh, western medicine so what are those traditional medicine practices south korea has a, a whole lot of publications on traditional medicine uh, india has china has so related to covid 19 would be would be our investigation we would travel through those markets where they sell this traditional medicines you will see uh, uh shops where people are there typically elderly would be sitting there in those shops where medicines are being dispensed so through our um, uh, guide we will be able to learn the role of traditional medicine in disease prevention and health promotion so that is uh, going to be our health focus primarily and there is another topic which is on the side burner which if someone is interested in is the role of uh, um uh, south korea in um uh, in uh, medical tourism so um you would see hospitals which are plastic surgery specialists are practicing out from and uh, you would see plastic surgery being uh, advertised a lot and uh, people from china travel over for plastic surgery um korea became the plastic surgery capital of the world and uh, that's medical tourism so exploring medical tourism in south korea becomes another topic which if students are interested in we could develop that but uh, traditional the role of traditional medicine is the primary focus which we would be uh, looking into and of course the sustainable development piece uh, the united nations has 17 goals of sustainable uh, development and uh, the office of uh, sustainable development is a very short distance away from our campus where you would be living and uh, we are planning to take you over to that office engage with the director of the sustainable development uh, office there and uh, i'll show you some pictures of our group who went out and then they introduced to them about the 17 goals and what their office was doing so it's kind of immersing yourself asking those questions out there when you pe see people leading the charge uh, of sustainable development globally 
So um, there is this piece of uh, the competencies, which I'm highlighting here for you. Uh, we would be focusing on community engagement, cultural competency, and of course, uh, collaborating partner, partnering health equity and social justice and social, cultural and political awareness. Those are broadly the competencies which we will be covering on. Uh, uh, and uh, say, for example, you should be able to learn and use uh, group processes to uh, advance community involvement. You should be able to understand how do you inco incorporate strategies for interacting with persons from diverse backgrounds. So those are the competencies which are listed in the syllabus, which we will be highlighting in your learning outcomes, uh, uh, expected learning outcomes in the program. So these are listed out and uh, in the syllabus as well. Um, so we are um, focusing on community engagement and to enhance your learning. And uh, we are um, kind of promoting both academic understanding and also uh, community needs. Remember that this is the first time it's going in and then you will be definitely experiencing uh, those felt needs, which you think, you know, there are needs here, which the community uh, have, and then you will bring it up in your reflection paper. Those will be our conversations for the next time when we go out. So your reflection would be utilized throughout the course to enhance your learning, your own learning, your peer learning, and of course, help in broader connections to the society. So um, that's our goal. And this is, I'm sorry for the small font size, but this gives you an idea of the detailed itinerary which we have planned for you, uh, leaving on Saturday, June 26th, uh, arriving on Sunday, June 27th. And then uh, you will be transported out from the airport to the Asia campus where your housing is ready. And everything would be taken care of once you land. And uh, then we can start with our discussions and uh, our field work starting on Monday. I'll be living on campus with you. So uh, the campus is a small uh, um, area where the buildings are a short distance across. So I will be one of, in one of the apartments on campus with you. So that, that opens up uh, time for our conversations while we are there living together. So most of the meals are covered, lunch and dinner, uh, because traditionally that's how South Korean society is built. You will have uh, family meals. Uh, seldom I have seen uh, a person from that country eat alone. So that was my biggest challenge when I was living there. When I was living there alone, my family was here in the United States. I would go out and feel a little out of water sitting there and, and uh, having my meals alone. So um, it's a family style, uh, most of the uh, lunches and dinners we have planned here. We've planned a hike for you on, on Saturday. And then we go out to the East Coast uh, of South Korea, uh, which overlooks uh, the Sea of Japan and overlooks the, um, uh, some of the islands owned by Japan. And on a clear day, you can go out to the mountaintop uh, where we would be and uh, take a view out into that area and then distinguish uh, some of those islands, the Japanese islands out there. So we would be taking you out on an excursion out to the uh, city of Sokcho. You can learn more about it. Uh, there are links available online. We can share those links with you. Sokcho and we'll visit the, one of the biggest Buddhist temples there in Sokcho and we'll stay uh, a weekend there and do another hike up in one of those national forests uh, in that area. Uh, and then, um, we have uh, those uh, excursions, two excursions out there. We will be taking you out to some of the traditional fish markets. Uh, the idea is to expose you to occupational safety and hazards, uh, as you may find that they are so different in handling their day-to-day -day job uh, as uh, compared to what you would see in the United States. So while you are there in the restaurants also, or in the streets for the street food, you may uh, question on, uh, you know, on the occupational, uh, I would say the food safety and handling practices in, in those areas. 
So those are the conversations I've had in the past with my students. Um, so um, this, this is uh, the students which I had last time and uh, this is exploring public health. In the background is Seoul City, the modern buildings. And uh, you will walk through the streets and then, um, then suddenly come across the traditional uh, buildings, um, you know, hidden by these tall buildings uh, uh, of modern Seoul. Uh, there's a lot of walking in, uh, involved. As you see, the students are all well prepared for walking. I keep on telling students that be prepared to walk about 12 miles, uh, definitely, and uh, um, be prepared for that, but not that you're walking 12 miles at a fast pace, but leisurely, that's what we accomplish. And it's fun to go out in that weather. This in the background is the Blue House. Blue House is the president's uh, um, living in office area, like the White House. So we go as close as possible to the Blue House. Behind that is the mountain, which you will be hiking up to. And this is again, that same group with me uh, in the, who had gone out. And this is Songdo. Uh, the skyscrapers would be your um, um, uh, kind of uh, view out from your windows or when you are in Songdo, when you are moving in that city. Uh, this, these, this, this is a, a little structure in one of the parks in Songdo. And uh, there are many parks and we'll walk through those. Uh, gives you an idea of the physical exercise, open air gyms. These are students who were walking through those and wanted to experiment these open air gyms. Uh, so that's uh, aside from Songdo, uh, our daily walk through those parks. And this is uh, uh, the wastewater treatment facility. I'll be taking you to that place and uh, you can learn about how the city has been built in, uh, to um, um, uh, take care of the waste and transform it to uh, something which is a product which is usable. And there's a lot of high-tech uh, uh, involvement in it and you will learn uh, when they are um, presenting it to you. And um, this is the Office of Development with its director and the 17 goals uh, being displayed uh, on the side. And that students uh, had a meeting with the director and then he introduced to them about the concept of the sustainable development goals and also opened up a conversation where students could do a, a, a three month long internship. So that's something which students were very interested in and uh, you can uh, question him on those three months internships. You may see that the Asia campus itself offers housing and if you are a three month uh, intern there, you can negotiate with our UAC and the Office of Global Engagement and probably work through these uh, uh, internships. Hinkley uh, does those internships and there are other opportunities as well. So there are, these are our students enjoying an orientation meeting within the Asia campus building, uh, flashing the U. And uh, we take you out to um, certain areas where uh, Korea is pushing for multiculturalism. And these are some of the offices where you walk through and learn what the operations are and how Korea is pushing for multicultural society in, uh, in the modern uh, times. So um, you get a chance to wear those country dresses. You would get a chance to walk through traditional markets on the side of the vegetable markets where I'll take you around and in this, you will find the traditional medicine practitioners. And then of course, walk through the busy mall areas, the modern shopping areas, and also experiment with the uh, street food. On the right side, if you see, that's a street food seller. And it's intriguing and fascinating. And uh, you cannot help yourself, uh, you know, stop yourself from eating. So, um, these are two contacts. Uh, one is mine, my email out there, and then Pam Lines email. Thank you, TP, so much. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Singh? Hi, TP. Um, this is Lisa in Korea. Um, I was actually wondering if you still had your Kakao Messenger. 
Oh, I I do have that, and I forgot to add it. I have that Kakao Messenger on. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, can you and uh send your Kakao ID in the chat? Okay, I'll do that. I also wanted to mention we will be having two information sessions about the CREA program next week. Uh, we will have more information and a little bit more time for question and answers those nights. Um, as I will be receiving your information, I will send you more information on those um, information nights. If you are interested in our program, the the application system has finally um, been up and running. So you can go to the Learning Abroad office and see our program information and apply as well. I think the mention is the deadline for all learning, the Learning Abroad program application will be February 15th. If we need to extend that, um, we will. Um, also we wanted to let you know scholarship, um, they're not doing a scholarship raffle this time as right now, the applic scholarship application is not open at the moment, um, but they will be working on that soon to get that up and running. So if you guys have any questions, um, there's some open advising um, times for the Learning Abroad Office Advisors. So they're happy to talk to you about scholarships with that as well. So does anybody have any other questions? We're really excited about offering the South Korea Learning Abroad at the Asia campus. And it's a wonderful campus. One of these days I will get over there, but we are really excited as we know all the programs have been canceled that we're able to offer this one as we have, our campus is wonderful over there and we're able to make it so that um, it's safe and um, able to have our students over there. So we hope to see you there. If you have any questions, like I said, please give Dr. Singh or I any, um, any feedback and any emails, and then we'll send you information on our info sessions for next week. I've got a question for uh, the students in this meeting. Um, have any of you been to Korea before? Looks like no. Oh, cool. Um, I am an MPH student out here in Korea. I'm Korean American. Um, I just joined this meeting because I knew that the study abroad was going to be happening in the summer and I will be here for the summer. So if any, any of you guys have questions about Korean culture at all, um, I'll put my Instagram ID in the chat here. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram if you've got any questions and want to know more about Korea in general. Um, it's really awesome out here. And I think that if you guys come out here, you'll love it. Um, anybody else? I, I highly, highly encourage you if you're looking for a global experience. This is a safe place to be in. You will love it. And the reflections we've had from our students who went with us earlier speak volume for um, a, the, the learning uh, part of it. And um, you're safe and secure. Even late evening travels are not a big, deep, big issue out there, but we prefer to be in groups. So you'll be taken care of. All our travels are in uh, a group format. And then remember, um, as a policy, we do not allow side trips. So uh, it's only at the end of the program, or if you want to do a side trip yourself, you can do it at the beginning, before on your own, or after the program ends. But that's your own um, you know, travels and your liability, everything is yours. We do not encourage say a weekend side trip on your own. Okay, well, since our time is up, thank you everyone for attending our program preview um, for Korea. As I said, if you have any questions, please let Dr. Singh or I know. And if you're able to attend our info sessions next week, that would be wonderful. Thanks guys.